triathletes and welcome back to another session with Triathlon Tessa. With today's video, we'll be run specific where I share some knowledge and tips regarding running. To accomplish something extraordinary, one must have an extraordinary dream. Ironman inspires us to reimagine our limits, to set our sights higher, to go farther than we ever have before. Ironman is a statement of excellence, passion, commitment. It is a test of physical toughness and mental strength. Iron Man is about persevering, enduring, and being a part of something larger than ourselves. It shows the heights that can be achieved when we push beyond our boundaries and go the distance to earn the title Iron Man. And those of you that have heard about the coronavirus, as the race cancellations and training restrictions, we just need to stay motivated during this time and try and keep up our training as far as possible. I've also heard that the last race of my season, the Ironman at the end of March has been postponed and will only be taking place on the 15th of November. For me, I can see the positive in that as for the first time, I will be able to complete an Ironman after I've completed a full cycle of off-season, base-season, strength and speed as well as race specific. So I add the two weeks that I had to my base building phase to just build a stronger base for when my race is at the end of November. For those of you guys that can't train outside, try and do most of your training indoors, either in your swimming pool with a stretchy cord or on the treadmill or on an indoor trainer. For those of you who have trained for your race, you can complete an indoor triathlon just to use that fitness that you have built not to lose motivation. So let's dig into today's session. First off, let's focus on the different types of running shoes that you get out there. There are a couple of different running shoes out there. First off, if you look at the trail running shoes, you'll see that they have a different grip at the bottom of the shoe than your normal running shoes. Then I have two different shoes that I use for running. First for endurance, I use the Hoka Bondi 6 as they are very comfy and the sole gives me a lot of support for my longer training sessions. But when I go over to the speed work sessions, I want to be fast off the ground, so then I'll use my ASICS. And then for those of you that does not have that big of an arch or are over pronating, there's some inner soles that you can put on the inside as well. I have one for a flat arch, so this just helps me and is a bit higher on the arch end to help me run smoother. So you're more than welcome to go and buy those at your sports shop and put them on the inside of your shoe to make your running as comfortable as possible. While we're on running shoes, you'll see that I have two different types of laces on my shoes. I have the normal laces that came with the shoe and then I replaced my endurance ones with some elastic laces. I use these in races as well as it's much easier to put your feet in and you're off into transition much quicker. Then on to socks, there are two different types of socks that you guys can use. First off, you can use very thin socks that does not have something at the bottom to absorb the sweat. Then I like to use the Balega socks as they are very thick at the bottom and they'll keep my feet dry when I'm out on a long run. So you'll see that they are much thicker at the bottom than your normal type of socks. So go and try out these Balegas. I have found them to be very comfy and they're about a quarter of the price as the normal Falker socks that you get out there. Then something that we runners tend to suffer from, we tend to get a lot of blisters on our feet. That is usually due to our shoes or socks not fitting correctly. So I would suggest when you go and buy a running shoe, I would suggest that you would buy one size bigger than your normal shoes that you wear every day as our feet tend to swell when we run and then there's not enough space for our feet to swell if the shoes are too small. Then something that you can use if you are prone to blisters, you can either use some Vaseline or some elastic plaster or any plaster that you can cover the open areas with. Something important to note as well, remember when running, if your toenails are too long, the chances of you losing your toenails are also very high. So make sure that they are short and there's no sharp edges that can stick to the inside of your socks. Then next, Let's look at some ways you can take your nutrition with you on the run. First off, you can go and run with a normal water bottle, but I don't like that as it's very difficult to hold onto the bottle. So I have one from Hi5. I'll just put my hand on the inside and it won't affect my running gait at all as I'm gripping the bottle. You can either use this with your left or your right hand. 
and then there's also some squishy bottles that you can use as you've used up the liquid you'll see that they'll just go down to a plastic bag and you can just put them in the back of your pants or something so you don't need to carry them in your hand then there's also lots of other options with racing belts that you can put around your waist this is one from adidas with 350 ml bottles and on the front you'll see there's also a space where you can put your peas or some nutrition and there's also some side holes where you can put some of your gels if you like to train with gels as well so those are a couple of options that you can use for nutrition but if you're going very far and you want a lot of nutrition with you you're also more than welcome to use a camel bag or there's some trail running specific backpacks that you can use as well that will go around your waist and you can carry lots of nutrition with you then let's look at some glasses i have a pair of running glasses that i use while cycling as well with some interchanging lenses so you'll see that it's a normal pair of running glasses but it has something on the inside that can catch your sweat and then if you look here you'll see that there are also different types of lenses that you can put on and change depending on what type of ride you are doing but the very nice thing about this pair of running glasses is that there's a separate attachment on the inside that you can just put on the inside of your glasses for those of you guys that wear prescription lenses so you guys can put your prescription lenses on the inside of your glasses so that will make it much easier and you don't need a specific sunglasses for your prescription lenses you can just change the inside to your prescription lenses and then you can also go and change the different types of lenses I'll put up these glasses on my website. You will be able to buy them there as well for around 750 Rand. Then also when you're out running, most people like to have something on their head. There's two different types of hats that you get out there. The first one will be a normal hat that is open at the top. The other one would be a hat that's closed on top. Some people prefer the one that's closed and others might prefer the one that's open on top. Then let's look at something that you guys can use when you are out running in the dark either at night or in the morning so for winter training or late night training i would suggest that you wear something like this so there's a couple of options out there i have something that i can put around my arm or my ankle that will just be a red light or you can use a flickering red light as well so people would see you out there if you are running out in the dark something else that you might consider as well it's just a jersey that has reflective stripes on them you will also get waistbands with the same type of reflective material on them as well this is just that people can see you out running in the dark and they won't run you over while you're out on your training session then something else that you can add to your winter running is just a jacket that's a bit breathable not something very thick or very heavy but something very light and also has some reflective stripes in them so people will be able to see you this one also has a running cap on the inside so if it stops to rain I would just be able to put it on my head and then the last two things that I want to look at today is if you're out running and you like to run with music you can either use your mp3 player with your normal earphones or I have a pair of Liberty Bluetooth earphones so they're just earphones that I can put inside my ears and there's no other cables that I need to plug in anyway so I'll just link this to my watch if you are able to have some music on your watch or you can have your cell phone with you and you can just put it away and this will be on the inside of your ears and link via Bluetooth so this is also a very nice option to have and then when you look at HR I have found that the wrist based HR aren't that accurate than a normal heart rate strap so I use the Wahoo heart rate strap as this strap is compatible with almost all types of watches out there. I've used this on a Polo watch, on a Garmin watch and a TomTom Tom watch. So I'd really suggest that this would be a great investment to have. You can also use this when training on Zwift as it links to Zwift as well. And then lastly when we speak about training on Zwift, if you have a treadmill and you want to train on Zwift, there's a small adapter that you need to buy so that you would be able to run on Zwift. You'll see that I have a small thing here on my shoe. It's called a Garmin shoe pod. It's something that links your treadmill running with the Zwift if you can't afford one of those Bluetooth treadmills. It's not very expensive. It's around a thousand rand if you buy them in South Africa and that will help you run on Zwift. I use this in my normal training as well as with the foot pod, I'll get some extra information that I do not get from my normal running watch. So foot pod's also a very nice investment to have if you train indoors a lot 
or if you want some extra metrics that you do not get with your watch. And that's it for today. Thank you for watching this video and please go and like and subscribe to my YouTube channel, my Facebook group and Instagram all under Triathlontessa and go and check out the website under www.triathlontessa.com and keep up the training even though we are faced with the coronavirus and some races might be cancelled and you're not allowed to train in public places or in the gym make the best of the situation and think of innovative ways that you can train at home to still keep your fitness level so please look out for the next video where i'll share some strength and mobility exercises that you guys can perform on the comfort of your home